It's hard to believe that it's been nearly two years since Cadillac finally entered the premium electric vehicle space with the introduction of the first ever Cadillac Lyric. Now, as you guys know, the Lyric is built off of GM's excellent Altium architecture. And when they first launched this vehicle in 2022, it was only available with a single motor rear drive configuration and just one launch edition trim. However, for 2024, the Lyric has kind of exploded to now offer seven trims and the addition of an all wheel drive version. As you can see this week, we have finally gotten our hands on a Lyric all-wheel drive in this Sport 3 configuration. As you can see, it's painted in this really nice shade of stellar black metallic. And the big question I want to answer, for those of you who've been waiting a long time for the Cadillac of electric luxury SUVs, was that long wait for the all-new Lyric worth it? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling of the new Lyric, and let me tell you, this vehicle is one attractive looking luxury SUV that turns a lot of heads. I thought I'd pop the, pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing and answer the million dollar question, does it have a frunk? Because that's always something that people ask me with an electric vehicle. And if you guys know the Altium SUV architecture, you'll know that it sadly does not have a frunk. However, Cadillac has a good reason for that. Now, underneath the hood, you're going to find a pretty massive plastic shroud. It kind of reminds me of the big plastic shroud that I also saw under the hood of the Blazer and, of course, something like the BMW i4, which doesn't share an architecture with this. But underneath that cover, you're going to find basically two electric motors. Remember, when this car first came out, it only offered a single electric motor on the rear axle. Now, this model here is the 600E4 configuration, which means we have an electric motor at the front and an electric motor at the rear. It's getting power from a 102 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery battery pack. Now in this configuration with all-wheel drive, Cadillac says this model makes 500 horsepower. That's right, an electric SUV with 500 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. It basically has a nice even power split where the front motor makes 250 horsepower, the rear motor makes 250 horsepower, and 225 pound-feet of torque on each axle. Now it all goes out through a one-speed reduction gear transmission, and Cadillac doesn't quote a 0-60 to 60 time, but we got 6.2 in the rear drive version. Uh, we'll see, we'll get this out on the road, see what we can get uh, in our actual testing. It should have a top speed of around 132 miles an hour. So it's a little bit faster versus the rear drive version uh, in terms of top speed. Uh, and uh, if you guys are planning to tow with this vehicle, the Lyrics can all tow a maximum of 3,500 pounds. Uh, it can accept up to 190 kilowatts on a DC fast charger with a 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger. Uh, and uh, Cadillac says this model here, because it has the uh, extra electric motor, comes in at a curb weight of just over 5,900 pounds. So it's around 300 pounds heavier versus the rear drive only version of the Lyric. But uh, as you can see, there's a big plastic cover under here. If you lift this up, which it's just held together with basically snaps. You can see there's the front electric motor. It's definitely a little bit taller and larger. Uh, there's less space underneath here versus the rear drive version that I showed you uh, in my last Lyric review. It basically just snaps right into place right there. And that's because again, the front motor takes up space, but even the rear drive version doesn't have a front trunk. And that's because Cadillac says they wanted the extra space. They wanted to utilize the extra space for that very powerful 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger, which I'll talk about in just a moment when we go to the charge port door. But closing the hood and talking about the styling. First of all, this color is called Stellar Black Metallic. It's $625 extra. It has an amazing amount of metallic fleck in it. It just looks fantastic along the lines of the all new Lyric. You can see the front end of this car just looks almost like a concept car. In fact, it reminds me, it reminds me a lot of Cadillac's super uber luxury Celestic, uh, which is a $300,000 hand built electric luxury sedan. Uh, again, the styling is very similar. My test car is also the sport trim level. You can basically add, take your pick between the, the tech, luxury, or sport. The sport kind of adds the dark anodized chrome accents. It has a slightly different texture in the grill finish with this kind of light signature as well. You can see there's a sequential LED turn signal along with the stacked uh, full LED headlights, which as you can see, the LED headlights very much look like a concept car. They're LED low and high beams with an LED daytime running light. It also has a very cool signature welcome and exit animation as you approach and uh, depart the vehicle or walk away from the car. The light signature will show you this kind of cool little animation that really kind of just adds to the premium feel. The Cadillac logo also lights up there in the grill, which is nice. There's kind of an outline that goes around the Cadillac Crest grill. It's got some active grill shutters there with some functional openings. It's got a front camera there with some active parking sensors, nicely integrated parking sensors. And overall, I think this car still looks absolutely stunning. In fact, the entire Ultium SUV architecture 
is very flexible to the point where you know, like if you look at the Blazer EV, it looks fantastic. The uh, Lyric looks great. The Prologue, I also just drove that from Honda. It looks a little bit more conservative, but still handsome. And then I'll be driving the new Acura ZDX Type S, which was basically this car with an Acura badge on it. Now, moving around the side profile, this is again built on a dedicated skateboard EV architecture with a 102 kilowatt ba uh, battery on board. All Lyrics have that battery pack. The Lyric is also relatively large by electric crossover standards. This vehicle has a 120 22 inch long wheelbase. So again, very long wheelbase with a 196.7 inch long overall length. It's around 4.7 inches longer versus the Blazer EV, but it's about an inch shorter versus the ZDX Type S or the Acura ZDX. So again, very nice proportions. It's around 77 inches wide. So a low wide stance, it makes it look more like a wagon. Now, I also love the fact that Cadillac decided to paint the wheel arch moldings, which is nice. You have these massive 22 inch wheels. You can see, I love the dark finish with the multiple spoke design. Uh, it's riding on a 275 by 40 R22 tire. You can add a 20, a 20 inch wheel for $1,000 extra if you guys don't want these big wheels. Again, this is gonna you know, affect the ride quality slightly and it's also going to make these tires prone to damage if you hit potholes. So I personally would look into the 20s. You have a 12.6 inch rotor at the front, a 13.6 inch rotor at the back. You have an all independent suspension with adaptive dampers, but no air suspension. Cadillac does not offer that on the Lyric. You have around seven inches of ground clearance as well. So it has a little ground clearance, but again, this is more like an electric wagon versus an SUV. Now, just like the Blazer EV, the Lyric also has its charge port door on the driver's side here on the front, front fender. You basically push the Cadillac logo there. That opens up the motorized door, which as you can see, the door is still a little bit shaky. It actually does close a lot better now versus when I first tested this model a year and a half ago. But when you first open it, it's just a little, it could be a little bit smoother uh, when it opens up. You can see this model still uses the J1772 plug with the CCS combo connector. It has basically the ability to accept up to 190 kilowatts. You can see there's the CCS combo plug. And one of the cool things is when you find a level three charger, you can basically add around 77 miles of range in 10 minutes. That's because it can accept up to 190 kilowatts. Obviously that's not as fast as the 350 kilowatt on like the GMC Hummer EV, but because of the smaller battery pack, Cadillac says it wasn't necessary to do the more expensive 350. Uh, the other great thing is you have that 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger, which means on a level two on a 100 amp house circuit, you can basically add around 51 miles of range in an hour. That's roughly twice as fast as most vehicles with like an, a 10 and a half or 11 kilowatt onboard charger. So that's an optional charger. It really makes the Lyric one of the quickest charging EVs that you're going to find on the market. Now looking at the side mirrors, you can see they're black painted. They have an integrated turn signal, camera mirror or camera mounted over there. They're power folding. The sport trim basically blacks out a lot of the chrome bits on the luxury trim, which is nice. You also have a panoramic sunroof that also opens up to vent air. That's a $1,600 upcharge if you guys like that. Cadillac also offers a black painted roof. Obviously my test car is black on black, so it already looks good as it is. And then moving to the rear profile of this vehicle, man, the Lyric really is an attractive car. I literally have had it for just a couple days. And every time I drive this thing, people really do do a double take and they stare at this car because it just has these really attractive lines. I I gotta say, however, the rear is a little controversial in the fact that you have this kind of interesting piece here for the taillight that goes up the D-pillar. That's very Cadillac, but it also is interesting because there's a painted area here. You have an integrated spoiler back here. No rear wiper back here, however. You can see uh, it has like these little vents that kind of go behind the spoiler that Cadillac basically says uh, negates the need for a rear wiper because the air can kind of flow and push the water out. That's fine in the rain, but in the snow or whatever, you're going to be dealing with uh, the inability to not be able to wipe the rear window, which is kind of annoying. Looking at the back of the car, you can see the taillights also have that trendy continuous LED, although it's not a continuous light bar that goes across. You can see the Cadillac logo back here also lights up. You have a Lyric badge here. And then this badge here is 600 E4. That's the only way you're going to tell that this car is all wheel drive because 600 refers to the torque in Newton meters. A rear drive model will basically say 450E, E for electric, four for all wheel drive. Hate that, you know, branding. I wish Cadillac would just do away with that because nobody in America measures torque in Newton meters. Now you can see there is an interesting little peekaboo hole that goes to a seat that goes through and into the LED taillight, which is an interesting design. Uh, down here on the rear bumper, you can see the sport trim gets uh, more body colored accents or nicely integrated rear 
uh, parking sensors as well. And then when you want to access the trunk, you basically push down on the Cadillac logo there. That opens up the power lift gate, obviously. And then looking at the cargo capacity, the Lyric is a very long vehicle, but surprisingly, it doesn't have more cargo space than some of its competitors, which are smaller. Now, with, this, with the seats up, this car is only a two-row, you get around 28 cubic feet of total storage space, which is fine. It's not a huge amount, uh, but it certainly is very usable. You can see there's a cargo cover on, on this model. You open this up, you can see it has the mobile charger. It has a nice little storage compartment over here as well. It looks like no spare tire on this car, however, so you will have to deal with like a fix-a-flat kit. If you fold down those seats, which I think Cadillac lets you do it from back here, you just push that button, you can see that electrically or hydraulically pushes the seat down. It expands the cargo to just under 61 cubic feet of space, which again is a usable amount, but other vehicles, gas-powered vehicles, uh, that are about this big probably have around 10 to 15 more cubic feet of actual total storage space. So the outside of the Cadillac Lyric continues to turn heads, but what about the interior? This is also where Cadillac spent a lot of time making this car feel a lot more futuristic and a lot more luxurious than past models. You can see before we get inside, here's the key fob for the vehicle. I do wish that Cadillac would have given this car its own unique fob. You can see it's uh, basically the same Cadillac fob and GM variation of a GM fob on other vehicles. It has your usual lock, unlock, remote start, power liftgate, and panic function. Cadillac also offers a phone as a key option if you guys would like, along with a digital key function in addition to also accessing the car through uh, your smartphone if you're an owner of this vehicle. Now you can see the door handles have a pop-out design. Um, so basically when the door is locked, they basically will retract in. As you approach the vehicle, they will retract out. Um, and you can see when I unlocked it, you can basically uh, unfold the it'll unfold the mirrors. This vehicle also has a walk away auto lock feature. So if I walk away with the key fob, it'll also lock the doors for me automatically. You can see there's like a little place where you can put your phone if you guys have your phone connected to the car as well. Now my particular test car has the stellar black metallic exterior with the Nor and Santorini blue full leather interior. Now this is not the premium Napa leather that you can get for an extra four grand, uh, but this black on black combination isn't my you know, first choice, but I will say it does look really nice when it's clean. You can see I love the Santorini blue accents with the contrast white st uh, stitching. The head restraints also, they look pretty high tech and up upscale. You also have speakers built in because this model has the 19 speaker AKG, AKG premium audio system. The seats adjust in like 20 different ways. They are heated and cooled and offer a massaging function, which is nice. You can see looking at the door panel here, if you have the Napa leather package, it will basically include additional stitched leather on this portion and on the upper portion of the dash without it. It has a soft touch injection molded plastic. It has this really nice black finished wood trim, which is a matte finish. The seat controls are located on this on the actual door panel. You have your heated and cooled seat controls here, along with your two person memory padded center armrest here. The door handle control is technically electronic, but it kind of gives you a physical knob or handle to actually open up. Window controls, they have a nice high quality tactile feel. They're also accented metal. You also have metal accents on the AKG audio system. The stereo in this car, I have to say, sounds good, but I've heard better audio systems from like Bang & Olufsen or Burmester from other luxury brands. So I think Cadillac needs to work on the tuning um, and the harmonics of the AKG. AKG audio system. Now stepping inside, you can see with seven inches of ground clearance, you have a nice easy step in height. As I close the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. It does not offer a soft close feature. Again, this is not like an Escalade. Maybe the Escalade IQ will offer that. But overall, as you can see, it makes a really great first impression when you step inside, especially when you power the vehicle on. The start stop button is right here behind the steering wheel. And you can see that massive 33 inch curved OLED display. This is one continuous screen. So it's not two separate screens. This is one big screen that gives you basically your instrument panel, uh, gauges here, along with your infotainment system. And then there's also a separate touch screen here where you can kind of adjust the way this gauge display looks. You can also put your GPS function here, the map and whatnot. You can put a Google Maps or projection here in the center display. So that looks really cool. That all feels very futuristic. And it's one of the big wow factors of the Lyric when I first had a chance to drive this vehicle. Now my tester also has Super Cruise. So you can see here's the Super Cruise status bar. There's the camera that watches your face to make sure, to make sure you're paying attention. You can see this has the newest Cadillac Wreathless Crest logo. There's some touch sensitive buttons here for the heated steering wheel, your Super Cruise button, cruise control, and then your audio control over here. You also have a power tilt telescoping wheel, which offers a good amount of adjustability I will say, however, that I found a hard time finding a comfortable driving position in this car. There was just a moment where the steering wheel just didn't come out far enough. It also continuously blocks the top of this. 
when you're actually sitting up and looking over that. So try the vehicle out for yourself. Make sure you can get a comfortable driving position. You can see the materials on the dash have a nice soft touch injection molded plastic. Remember, this will be covered in leather if you guys go for the uh, Napa leather package for four grand. You have some aluminum trim here, which is nice. You have this really interesting dash vent, which is a traditional and it's, you know, with a joystick controller to adjust the airflow. It's also on the passenger side, but it definitely looks more futuristic, which is nice. You have switch gear in here, which feels a lot more upscale and bespoke spoke than their GM products. You can see here's the shifter, control the one-speed transmission, put the vehicle in reverse. You can see there's your full top-down 360 camera. That also gives you like an overhead view, a side view as well. Uh, that gives you a curb view so you don't curb your 22-inch wheels. That quality could be better, however, but again, uh, I love the transmission stock here and it also has your wiper controls here, just like other GM vehicles as well. Your headlight controls are now located in the screen. So you have to go here and to see more controls, go to lights and there's your headlight control there. Takes some getting used to, but again, you're just gonna leave it in automatic and you're not gonna touch it anymore uh, other than that, which again, most people are gonna do that. Uh, anyways, if this is your own personal car, you can pull up your trip computer information here. You can also pull up your headlight controls here. So there's a redundant system here as well. If you don't wanna go into the center screen, so that's nice. The Cadillac gives you that with their 33 inch curved display. Uh, and then uh, pulling up my phone, you can see there's the Apple CarPlay, it's wireless. This is great because this is not something you get in the new Blazer EV. Although the Blazer technically has a bigger 17.7 inch display. I don't know how big this is by itself. Uh, but again, um, this area here is not usable, but I like how Cadillac has made this area here colored the same as the background. So it almost looks like it's part of it, even though the actual CarPlay screen is a little bit on the small side. Uh, there's also the factory GPS, which you can also put over here and have two GPSs if you'd like. Um, or you can kind of come over here and turn off the uh, system over here, which again, Going back to the gauge display there, that's kind of the display that I prefer to have it on with the GPS function. All that lurk works really nice. Although I did find at times that sometimes the system would be a little bit slow and laggy. Um, but again, uh, that could just be something to do with my particular car. Try it out for yourself. Make sure you, this works for you. Now, drive mode selector is located in the actual screen. You can see there's four different drive modes, including a touring mode. There's your one pedal drive feature, which this car also allows you to customize the level of one pedal drive. I actually find the one pedal drive to be among the best in the industry. It's very smooth and linear and predictable, and it also will bring you down to a full stop and uh, bring you down to an actual stop uh, when the vehicle is in one pedal drive mode. Not all the brands do that, which is kind of nice. How Cadillac does that. You can see now the screen seems to be working fine, but earlier I was using it and it was just being a little bit laggy, especially when it first boots up. Uh, over here, you can see you have your dual zone climate control with actual hard buttons, which is nice. There's a separate little storage area here, which is definitely a nice little touch. It's also lined in leather, which is nice. Although, although when I started looking down here, I noticed a couple of fitment issues over here with this panel gap. You can see this right here doesn't really look particularly nice. That also is kind of coming down. So not really great to see. Happy to see that on a car with an almost $80,000 price tag. There's also kind of this plastic area here, which tries to look like metal. There's a USB-C charging port there. It looks nice, but as you get closer, it feels a little bit cheap. I also do love the storage compartment here, which has a ton of room, although it's not covered. Uh, you also have this kind of controller here that allows you to basically not touch the screen if you prefer. Um, you have an actual wheel here to turn the volume up and down. You have hard buttons. However, I will say that if you plan to use this, this sounds incredibly cheap. So I don't love that. I don't love that. And I really think that uh, Cadillac needs to rethink the supplier for this because it looks beautiful, but it sounds cheap when you're actually using it, which isn't great. I do love this kind of a metal look here for the cup holders. And there's also that kind of like interesting little piece here that you can open up to put mugs. Although again, it's a little creaky when you start to play around with the interior. There's some nice wood grain here. So again, it looks fantastic, but when you start using it and poking around, I'm noticing some fitment issues and some creakiness and quality issues. That's not great to see, especially in a Cadillac vehicle. You can see there's a nice padded armrest here. Open this up, you can see your USB is, is there. You have a power outlet, you have another USB right here next to the wireless phone charging pad. So that's really nice. There's some piano black plastic which is going to show fingerprints annoyingly, uh, which isn't fantastic. But again, it looks good when it's clean. You can see the seats. I will say the seats look really futuristic and high-tech, but they aren't the most comfortable. I... I found the seat is a little bit difficult to actually get comfortable in despite the multiple drive modes and ways you can adjust the seats. Um, so try the seats out for yourselves. Make sure that they actually work for you. Uh, the glove compartment, you actually access it by pushing a button here. Open that up. You can see it's a bin style. It's damped in line with felt. Uh, it's actually really nicely sized. Um, 
So that's a really good in terms of storage. There's a cloth material here. There's a digital camera review mirror, which is definitely nice, improves visibility. There's also beautiful ambient lighting in this car. You can kind of adjust the ambient lighting to show multiple colors. Um, and it kind of reminds me of the new Cadillac Escalade as well. You can see this big panoramic sunroof lets in a lot of light and you can also open it up to vent air, which is a nice touch. So I think that most people are gonna be really happy when they see you know, that little feature, especially the fact that it opens. But overall, the interior of the Lyric is definitely upscale, premium. It has really great tech. It just needs an improvement in the fit and finish department. And at this stage of the game where this car has been available, it's kind of a little inexcusable that Cadillac still can't put together the interior that feels like it has the build quality that you expect with a Cadillac brand. Moving to the back seat of the Cadillac Lyric, you can see this is where that long wheelbase has given this car more rear seat legroom versus some of the competitors. You can see there's around 39 and a half inches back here, which is around two to four versus a lot of its main rivals. You can see materials back quality back here is the same as the front, soft touch injection molded plastic, beautiful wood, metal speaker covers, padded area here, along with that kind of interesting door handle, nice switch gear as well. These seats also do recline. This is with the seat, this is with the seat upright, and then you can also push it back into another position to recline it, which is nice. The seat also folds down. This doesn't slide forward and back, however. But once I get back here, you can see the space is good, although you do have to duck your head slightly because of the slightly sloping roof as I shut the door. The door has the same solid sounding thunk. And then you can see back here, there's a ton of leg room. I can easily stretch out. This is where I have the seat to drive. There's a flat floor here because this is a dedicated EV architecture. You have three level heated rear seats along with your own climate control area, vents. You have a household power outlet, two USB-C charging ports, which is nice. Two storage cubbies here, like I said. And then uh, looking at this actual seat, you can see it has the same beautiful uh, black with the Santorini blue. I will say, however, that the child latch anchors here, they do protrude out a little bit farther where I can feel it kind of stabbing me in the lower back. There is an armrest here that folds down and gives me two cup holders, which is nice. And then if I lean back here, you can see headroom space is pretty good, but I will say the headrest in this car, I don't love the shape of it. It kind of, again, stabs me in the back of the head. If I pull it up, it doesn't actually make it better. It makes it worse. I wish Cadillac allowed me the ability to kind of basically push the headrest back a little bit because this top portion here just stabs me in the head. But again, that's a personal thing. So make sure you try that out for yourself. But overall, the back seat is very comfortable and supportive, and it also has tons of space and tech in this car. Uh, a Cadillac just needs to kind of work on some of the details here with the cushion and the padding of the head restraints. But other than that, this is definitely one of the bigger back seats in the class. So it's kind of crazy to say that it's been a little over a year and a half since I actually drove the Cadillac Lyric. I think this must have been the longest time that I ever had to wait to drive a vehicle after driving it during the first drive and then getting one back at my home to test drive. I've already also had a chance to drive the uh, Chevrolet Blazer EV and the Honda Prologue. Remember, both of those vehicles also uh, account for um, are, are built on the same architecture as this vehicle, uh, the Ultium platform, although again, those are Honda branded vehicles compared to, you know, a GM branded car. So it's kind of interesting to say, but this car, you know, has basically 500 horsepower from its all wheel drive powertrain, which is an extra 160 ponies versus the uh, powertrain that you find in the rear drive version of the Chevrolet Blazer, of course. It's been a long time coming to drive this vehicle and I've been waiting a long time to finally get behind the wheel. So it's nice to finally see you know, Cadillac building this vehicle. Remember when it first came out, they really struggled to build this car. That's precisely the reason why we waited so long to finally get our hands on this vehicle. Uh, but with the all-wheel drive powertrain and a 102 kilowatt hour battery pack, we have a full charge now. It's showing 307 miles. Let's go ahead and see what we can see, what we can do zero to 60 wise. It's in sport mode, brake torquing it. Feels a little soft off the line, just like in the rear drive blazer, but oof. 0 to 60 in 4.84 seconds there. That is an appropriately good time, although it's not like blisteringly fast like you'll find in some of the other luxury branded EVs from like Mercedes EQ, EQ or BMW iX, for example. Um, what you notice about the Cadillac's propulsion system, the electric motors, is it feels soft initially, and Cadillac did that on purpose because they wanted this car to have a more of a linear progressive uh, acceleration curve as opposed to giving us all of the electrons immediately, which I understand their proposition of doing that, but EVs are just known for giving us that instantaneous, like face distorting thrust. And with 500 horsepower, I expected it to feel a little bit faster. Let's try it this time. This time I won't brake torque it though. It's, it is slightly uphill on this road. 
feels faster when I put my foot down to the floor without brake torquing it. But man, once you pass 30 miles an hour, there's where you feel the power, zero to 60 in five seconds flat almost. So that with it is, is with it more slightly uphill. I will test it up ahead again on a more level surface without brake torquing and we'll see what we can actually get. But again, most people who are buying this type of vehicle, Cadillac, buyers, typical Cadillac buyers, they're gonna get into this car because remember, this is Cadillac's first electric vehicle and it feels appropriately upscale and premium. I mean, this is built on their Ultium dedicated EV architecture. It's got a very long 122 inch long wheelbase, which also translates into a pretty good ride quality. The Blazer EV, when I had a chance to drive that, I basically said it had one of the best ride qualities in the electric SUV space. And the Lyric, even though we were on these big 22 inch wheels, uh, this car does have adaptive suspension, but no air suspension. I'm actually surprised at how well uh, this car rides. It has a pretty good ride quality. It soaks up the bumps nicely. It's also quiet in here. That's kind of what you expect with an electric vehicle. You expect it to be quiet. You expect it to ride really nicely. And the Lyric doesn't disappoint there. Uh, I'm sitting here, you know, just cruising along at normal speeds. And this is where the Lyric feels like a substantial car. It feels like it has um, really good you know, center of gravity because of that, that battery pack that's weighing the vehicle down. It's got a low center of gravity. Uh, the steering in the car is also uh, sharp, but it's not really transmitting much in terms of feedback, but the response of it is quick enough. The sport trim that I'm driving doesn't really add any kind of suspension upgrades. Um, it just basically makes the car look sportier with the dark chrome and black accents as opposed to all the chrome, shiny chrome that you get with the luxury trim. But this is still a very pleasant car to drive. This is really my first time experiencing the Altium SUV architecture for a longer period. And it's a really wonderful daily driver. Put your foot down here and the front and rear electric motors have basically the same 150 or 250 output. So the front motor and the rear motor makes 250 each along with 225 pound feet of torque. So it's a nice square, even amount of power. And I think again, that's what Cadillac was going for because they, they believe with luxury, they want everything to be well balanced. They don't want it to be too, too quick or too darty or too harsh. They just want it to be smooth. And you certainly get that with the Lyric. But let's try it here again, this time just flooring it, no brake torquing it. It also makes a fake propulsion sound. 4.85 seconds there, so very consistent time. Uh, and we'll take that as our best number. Again, it's not the quickest. I mean, the rear drive model will do it in around 6.2. That's what I tested it last in the Blazer EV and the Lyric a year and a half ago. So you shave about almost uh, around a second and a half when you go for the all wheel drive version, which is an improvement, but I just kind of wish it was a little bit faster. I was hoping for maybe like a sub four second time, but again, that doesn't really matter when you put your foot down here and you feel all that power that's just linear and it has that instantaneous pull. Again, above 30 miles an hour, that's where you get the full power of the 500 horsepower and it feels good. It feels appropriately, you know, quick given the fact that this is a Cadillac vehicle. Now, I wanna switch the drive mode uh, here, which you have to go into the screen to switch. I'm gonna put it into just my my mode here. Now my my mode, I basically set it to have a softer suspension tune, but sporty steering and uh, sport driving dynamics or, or the sportier engine response. You can also go into the tour mode, which basically dulls everything down and also reduces engine power or not, or it reduces the uh, engine to like a comfort setting. So it's not giving you all the craziness power uh, initially. So it makes it even like more linear, but you know what? It still is really fast actually. I'm surprised because you put your foot down, you're gonna surprise your passengers whenever you, you plant your foot because again, EVs have all that instantaneous power basically at zero RPM. And the Lyric is certainly no exception. Now in terms of the drivability and just driving this thing normally, Visibility out of this car is actually pretty good. I can see out of the front quite nicely. This A-pillar is a little bit thick, but uh, we've got bigger side mirrors, so I can, or side windows, and the mirrors are also a decent size, so I can see out of the sides pretty nice. The view out of the back, I will say, is compromised a little bit from the slope, but it fixes that when you put it into the digital camera review mirror. Uh, this car also has the latest version of Cadillac Super Cruise, which is one of the best systems in the business. Other brands have their own hands-free driving tech, and I gotta say, Super Cruise is still my favorite. This car will do automatic lane changes changes for you, it'll keep in the lane uh, centered, of course, and when you're on those roads where it has it mapped, you can basically drive for hours, miles, basically, with your hands off the wheel. And when you basically get super cruise when you go for the luxury or the sport trim, that's included when you step it up to those higher trims. Adaptive cruise, however, is gonna be standard on all versions of the Lyric. Now, in terms of the driving range, now, uh, this vehicle is rated to get 307 miles of range. We've had the car for a week in 
South Central Pennsylvania in February. So it's kind of in the middle of winter. We're at the tail end of winter, basically. Uh, and temperatures have been in the mid to low 40 or low to mid 40s basically since the week that I've had it. Now um, on a full charge the trip computer does show 307 miles of range and my actual real world testing I was getting around 260 miles of range. Now again it is cold outside so that is going to affect the range slightly. Uh, on a level three DC fast charger, Cadillac says you could basically add 77 miles of range in about 10 minutes. It can accept up to 190 kilowatts. That's average. Again, GM has their Ultium architecture that can accept up to 350 kilowatts on the GMC Hummer vehicles, but not on this model. They had to tailor that back on this version because again, it doesn't really require it because the battery is only 102 kilowatts. So again, the range is pretty much about what I expected. It's average. It's not going to be, you know, class leading, but it's still breaks that 300 mile barrier. So I think this car could do over 300 miles if you drove it in warmer conditions. Uh, and again, what really impresses me about this car is the fact that it has a 19.2 kilowatt onboard level two charger, which means if you have a 100, 100 amp circuit at your house and you have you know, you know that level two installed, you could add around 51 miles of range in an hour in this thing. So that's about twice as fast as most EVs are gonna charge on a level two at home. So it's gonna make this thing, you know, charging it overnight to be really quick. It's basically gonna take like, seven, eight hours versus like 12 hours uh, versus if you have like the 11 and a half kilowatt charger. So overall, I really liked the new Lyric. I liked it when I first drove it. I also liked the Blazer EV and I also liked the Prologue. I am going to be driving the ZDX and ZDX Type S in a couple months, which essentially is the same car. It's the same powertrain as this. And I wonder, I worry though, I hope Acura has done something to tune the powertrain because I don't think it's quite fast enough to be worthy of the Type S badge. Now it is still going to be quicker than an MDX Type best with its gas engine, but again, I'm talking about an Acura and it's kind of weird because Acura basically took this car and called it the ZDX Type S with its 500 horsepower. But overall, it's been a long time coming to drive the Lyric. This is still one of the best uh, premium electric SUVs that you can buy out there for the money. And for the money, it is still, I think, well-priced, although at this top end, it can get pretty expensive. But overall, the Lyric is still a very impressive SUV. I just hope Cadillac can continue to ramp up production and improve uh, the build quality as time goes on. So after finally getting a chance to spend a full week with the hotly anticipated Cadillac Lyric, I have to say GM's Altium SUV architecture, Altium pa pla platform continues to impress with just its everyday livability. This vehicle still is an attractive car, even though the design has been out for a couple of years now, it turns heads everywhere you go. It has an amazing ride quality that is befitting of a Cadillac luxury vehicle. It has an interior as well that is full of the latest tech. I mean, that 33 inch screen that is curved across that is basically one continuous piece of glass looks futuristic, it looks modern. The rear seat also has enough space for you know, your taller uh, adult friends to sit back there or your family members, of course. The cargo area is a little on the small side considering how big this car is, but it is also extremely usable. Really where the Lyric starts to let down a little bit is when you look at things in the detail. I mean, yes, this is a 500 horsepower electric SUV. It'll do 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. That time should be sufficient for most people. In fact, it'll keep pace with something like a Model Y dual motor non-performance vehicle. Uh, however, uh, the software behind the 33 inch screen, there are times where I noticed that it's a little bit slow and laggy and it froze a couple of times. So that was a little bit disconcerting. The build quality of this model here, GM has had a chance to build this car for almost two years now. And I definitely noticed a couple of fan, uh, panel fitment issues where there were gaps that were inconsistent. Not really great to see on a Cadillac luxury SUV. Charging speeds for this vehicle is average. Range also is pretty good at around 260-ish miles on a full charge in my real world testing in these 40 degree temperatures. I suspect this car will probably get closer to that 300 mile mark if you guys drive this vehicle in more ideal 60 to 70 degree, degree weather. And if you also look at the uh, price category of the Lyric, this is where this car is also equally attractive because this car starts for a rear drive touring version at around $58,700. I know, just under 60 grand for this car. And I know it's more expensive versus a Model Y. If you guys are comparing it to a Model Y, this is gonna be around $10,000 more. However, I would argue that this car is technically a class above the Model Y. It's bigger significantly, it has more luxury, it has a really impressive tech array as well, and it also just has a design that 
truly stands out. And for some people, design is everything along with that name, name brand because again, this is a Cadillac. It is the Cadillac of electric luxury SUVs. Now, if you guys want to step it up to all wheel drive, it's gonna cost you around $3,500 extra. So at that point, you're looking at around over $62,000 for this vehicle. That's still a reasonable amount of money considering the Blazer EV, this car's platform mate starts at around 56,715. So really two grand more for a Cadillac, it sounds like a no brainer. Now, if you guys wanna step it up to the luxury or the sport trim, it's gonna cost you an additional four grand on top of the base price. So you're really looking with all wheel drive just under 70 grand for either a sport or a luxury trim. There's also three different levels on top of that from the sport two or sport one, sport two, sport three, or luxury one, two, or three. Basically the luxury three or sport three is gonna roll in that AKG audio system, the massaging seats, the panoramic sunroof, the super cruise system. My test car with the uh, stellar black metallic exterior color and destination charge comes into a, an as tested price of 78,500 bucks. So again, now you're looking at just under $80,000, which still this vehicle slides in under that $80,000 price cap. However, as of the first of the year, this car no longer qualified for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. And that's because uh, some of the battery mineral sources come from countries where the US doesn't have a free trade agreement. And that's why it no longer qualifies. However, as of this filming at the end of February, you can still basically get this car from a Cadillac dealer and GM and Cadillac dealers are already discounting at $7,500. So even though the government's not giving it to you, dealers are giving it to you. So that kind of basically lops $7,500 off this $78,000, 500 price tag, which makes the Lyric very appealing. Although Cadillac says that later in the year, it should qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit because again, GM is gonna change the way they manufacture this car and update it so it uh, complies with you know that little law that allows this thing to sneak in and get the full tax credit. So really you're looking at a vehicle that is a little bit more expensive than some of the you know smaller electric SUVs out there, but what you do get is a car that looks far more expensive. I just want Cadillac to continue to refine the you know engineering or the build quality process because this model here, even though it's a full production spec, I did notice a couple of quality issues that were a little concerning, especially considering the fact that this car has been being built uh, for the last almost two years. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my extensive full overview on the 2024 Cadillac Lyric in the dual motor all wheel drive form. If you're also looking to see the latest vehicles I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.